God bless all my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Um, this teaching today, I'm going to help shed light, right, on a few um, topics that a lot of people don't understand, a lot of um, misquoted and misused Bible verses. You know, for one, people say, um, for one, uh, people, I thought you was uh, in class, Jeremy. I ain't even send you no message. I thought you would have been uh, in class, brother. That's why I ain't even message you. I just thought I was gonna make it early and people just catch up later. Um, you know, there's a lot of misquoted scriptures out there. And first we have to understand um, why is it, you know, why is, you know, the word of God today so taken out of context <laughs> well you know if you can create okay if you can create you know a false version of god's word then you can deceive people and if you deceive people see the, the the reason that satan did all of this stuff you know creating christianity you know the name christianity you know i always say that because you never know who's new watching my videos so you know christianity is not in the bible the word christian is in the bible okay so all denominations and all the different sayings and different things that's made up and created these things are all designed so people can be deceived and they will well first satan and his demons hate god's word and they hate god so when these demons and satan created denominations and they created the name christianity and they created segregation, schism, you know, division amongst those who claim to be Christians. They did it solely because that's how they feel towards God. And remember, the Bible said that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And the Bible talks about how all the members of the body are one, even if many serve different parts. Right? I mean, many have different, you know, roles to play. Right? But we're all one in Christ Jesus. So what better way to create confusion and delusion and insanity and different things like that, but to create a misrepresentation of God's word? Because A, Satan knows how powerful God is, you know, and B, he knows um, that if a person truly has faith and believe, those things that are written in the word of God will be manifested in their life. So Satan and his demons hate God, right? And they want you to hate God. So what they did was design a way that you will adapt darkness and adapt unrighteousness through falsehood of the teachings of God's word. So when you hear church on Sunday and tithes and offerings and different things like that, those things are so easy for the human being to do. It doesn't require anything. You can go to these false churches and be the same person you was at the club. And you can be that person at church just quiet listen to the preacher preach for an hour or so then you go on home so what happens is is they developed a way to where people will be deceived right but they will like and partake in these false doctrines and in these false teachings so what happens is is that when the truth is revealed to you or you come across the truth of god's word or one truly preaches the truth of god's word it won't sit well because you've been so long invested, you've been so long a part of false teachings and false uh, preachings and false, you know, Christian faith. So Satan designed these things. So you will have hatred towards God's word and you will have comfort, you know, temporarily peace in what is false. So that's why this all was created, right? It was designed for people to feel the way Satan feel towards God's word. Because why else would people, you know, you know, spend years, months, and decades in doing what the Bible doesn't say? Why would they be so delighted in doing those things that the Bible don't say to do? Why would you not wonder, nor suspect, nor have a desire in yourself to go and read that word for yourself and to make sure that whatever you are doing, whatever you are told, whatever was handed to you, you examine that 
in the light of God's word. You will say, well, hey, I want to make sure that I am on track. I want to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Your pastor is not God. Your mom is not God. Your dad is not God. We, when, once, once we all become believers, we all become equal. Ain't no more daddy, mommy, tell me what to do, you know, this and that. We respect them as the Bible say. But when they come to this walk, the Bible say work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Ain't nobody can tell you, you know, more than what the Bible say. A lot of us are just used to bring a person, you know, to to the understanding of, of what it is that God is saying and what his word is saying, however long that takes, whether it's 10 years, whether it's five, whatever the case may be, but we're here as it tells you in Ephesians 4. Read it for yourself, okay? To become a perfect man, right? Now, and you won't be tossed by every wind of doctrine. Now, so this is why when you see the word of God being preached with Bible chapter and verse, you see so many people rebuttal it. They, they become contentious. They fight it. They don't want to receive it because that's not what they've been told. That's not what they've been taught. They've been taught Jesus and God through superstition. It was passed down from their grandmothers to their, 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 their moms, their dads, their uncles, their grandfathers, whoever. They passed that superstition down. Let me tell you why majority of the world, right? Misrep misquotes God and they say his name and they got him in their bio on Facebook and on Instagram and their handles and everything. Why is it like that? Because it's been taught that way by darkness. Because see, people want to live for a very, very long time. People that live in sin don't want to die. People want to live with money, with finances, with, you know, sinful behavior, having sex, you know, this is why you see it never stops. Think about when people drink alcohol, people become alcoholics. Think about people smoke marijuana. Think about when people overeat. It's always in excess. So they want to do that every day. So sin is like an itch that has to be scratched. So they don't want to die and this is all they know. You don't know a life beyond here. You don't know what, what, what is to come you know, outside of the earth, those who live in sin. So you're, this is all you know. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in heaven or hell or whatever those type of things is. So this is where you enjoy your life. So when they think about when, when God was taught to these people, our generation, this nation, when God was taught, 99% of it was taught through superstition because people believe by saying, oh yeah, I believe in God. I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I love God. God loved me. Yeah, I'm a servant of Christ. I'm a warrior of Jesus. All this weird stuff that, that's, that's, that's misrepresented, misquoted, inaccurate as they speak it. You got somebody that hit a lick. I mean, rob somebody for $10,000. And they'll say, yeah, God bless me on this come up. And the Bible tells you what? Not to steal from any man. The Bible says if he steals, steal no more. Say so if your hand offends, you cut it off. The Bible tells you, man, people will, will have sex and they'll they'll sex with many men and many women and say, yeah, God made me to be a player. God blessed me with good looks to, to get women and have sex. You are uneducated, ignorant, and thinking that those things that you are doing, God represents it because you've been taught that through superstition. Superstition teaches you, hey, let me let me show some reverence, you know, towards God so I can live a long life or, you know, he can, he can bless me and, you know, keep me here on this earth. I mean, let me, let me respect him. Grandmama always told me, mama, you know, they, they told me, let me, or I respect the higher power. You understand what I'm saying? So very rare do you see people not be like, yeah, I believe, I don't believe, I believe in something, but I just, you know, and they show some type of respect because they want to live this life on this earth as long as they can, because the longer they can live, the longer they can enjoy living in sin. You understand? Sin is what they live for, what they breathe for, what they get up for in the morning. People get up and they masturbate. Some people get up and they get it right on their Facebook and go through, you know, the live or the home looking at worldly stuff. People get up and, you know, you know, uh, uh, check their text messages and look at all the worldly conversation and gossip. Some people get up and cut the TV straight on. Some people get up and, you know, they, um, they get on Instagram and see all the BBLs and, you know, all the guys taking the selfies and stuff like that. You know, this is what they live for. It, the, the word is enjoyable to them. It's only not enjoyable when that grace starts to fade over your life and you start having challenges. 
That's when it's not desirable. That's when, you know, or that certain things not desirable. And if you can't keep adjusting to whatever it is that you're going through, whether it's sickness, whether it's attacks in your mind by demons, whether it's, you know, um, all type of, you know, tr trouble befalling you on every side, then that's when you start wondering, okay, my, I, I got to check my mental health, right? They don't even say it's demons that's affecting They say it's mental health. You understand? So my point is, and like I'm telling you, from the word of God, the Bible say the way of truth will be evil spoken of. They won't endorse sound doctrine. So that's why Christianity was created from the devil. That's why it was made. Because it was designed to make you not like God's word. That's why no longer how that does that's why no matter how long you claim to have been saved or you claim to have been a Christian, right? And you're still living in sin. And you're still, you know, doing those things. And you're the one that says, I'm not where I need to be. I'm not where I used to be. Or you say, no one is perfect. We all ask yourself, when you hear that word, or when you see what that word say, why doesn't it sit well? Because you've been taught to hate it. You've been taught to look at the truth as a lie and the lie as a truth. That's why you get affected when you hear the word. That's why if Brother Ryan's up here myself, and I'm like, brother, you know, that's not biblical. That's not of God. Oh, you, that's not love, brother. That is love. What when when is if if a, if a if an older brother was out there trying to rescue his brother from the gang life or from the street life, and he's like, man, you got to come home. You got a curfew. Man, you embarrassing me. You're not embarrassing you. That's how you taking it because now your conscience is defiled. You're seeing darkness as good and seeing what's good as bad. Someone is out here at nighttime risking their safety and their self trying to get you to come home but you feel that they should have said it differently they should have came at it they come they should have came at a different way i sit up here and make these videos for hours i'm not i ain't got no watch on but i just speak from the abundance of my heart right and and somebody will comment and say something like oh brother ronald that's not in love what did i say that was derogatory disrespectful degrading or anything you don't understand love because you were you were taught those things so when the truth is revealed to you you have resisted. The Bible said that God chastens, right? He scourges, right? And he loves these people, right? The word of God says it. So the Bible says, rebuke a person, sharply rebuke them. How is it not love when the rebuke is designed to correct their behavior from leading them to hell? Like I have the Holy Ghost, right? I, I'm going into glory when I leave this world, right? I'm going into glory. So I'm just trying to help those who really want to live for God. But if you come with all the foolishness and the lies and the trickery and the, and the contradictions, I got to rebuke you. But see, you don't know that because you wasn't taught the true way of a Christian. The true way of a Christian. You never see people in the Bible that was getting chastised and rebuked. You never see them arguing back. They know what the words say. You say you signed up for this. This is the rules and regulations to our religion. That's it. That's factual information. If you signed up for this, it says don't do this and don't do that. You have to be held accountable. Ain't no one bigger than the program. No one is bigger than the Bible. No one's bigger than God's word. God is the boss. Okay? Jesus Christ is Lord. So you do as you told. If not, then you're going to be rebuked. You're going to be corrected. Right? Or you're going to be uh, 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 sent out of the church as you read in as scriptures that I'll read today. Okay? You're not allowed to sit here and make it seem like God doesn't have power. You're not allowed to come in here and act like this is every other religion that's in the world today. You're not allowed to come here and act like, like that the Holy Ghost doesn't come equipped with supernatural ability, powers, and gifts, as you can read in Galatians chapter five. You understand? You're not, you, you can't come in here acting like we're not given a gift from the spirit, one of the fruit of the spirit, right? Which is self-control. So we're not going to allow you to make a person look at because you don't understand when you're sitting here saying this stuff like, oh, you know, I'm not where I need to be. I'm not where I used to be. What is going to make someone from the world want to come to serve the God that you're saying you serve when you're just like them? They don't always commit some of the same sins and they don't even believe in God. They don't always, you know, uh, uh, do the same things and they don't even believe in God. Right. So what makes you different because you go to church on Sunday, you pay tithes and offerings, and you dress up in a suit or a dress? You're no different. So what is going to make the world want to come to God? Y'all don't care about that because y'all not true Christians. 
You're only doing it because it makes you feel good through superstition. You want to feel that, hey, I'm going to live long. You know, I'm, I'm going to have a good life. God can give me whatever I want to enjoy his life of sin. You're not thinking about really reaching those who are in the world. Those who are really living a life of sin and not understanding, you know, why this and why that. You don't care about that. You don't care that people are going to be discouraged from your life of, oh, I'm, I, I got to go to the doctors. I got to go to the hospital. Keep me lifted up in prayer. You know, I'm going through this relationship issues like you going through the same thing everybody else is going through that's in different religions false religions and you're out here talking about christianity christianity the lord is good this and that and then you're telling you on the phone with your your non-believing cousins or uncles and non-believing grandmas and grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads saying the same stuff engaging in the same gossip and same conversations that unbelievers do and you expect them to, to be intrigued or be inspired by your life of Fake God and bring make them want to come. See the difference between me and you? I'm really here for those people. That's why you don't see me up here asking for nothing, sowing those seeds, PayPal, GoFundMe, none of that stuff. I just come and speak the truth because this is the right thing to do. It's not because I get any reward. It's because it's the right thing to do. It's giving people opportunity and a chance. And it's a rare privilege to allow them to come into this family to live for God. That's why I do it. I don't, that's why you see in my bio, I don't got nothing. That's why you don't see me up here posting pictures and selfies, like none of that type of stuff. You understand? Because I'm only here to do the right thing. Okay? Others are doing reputation and, and, and pride. They know in their heart that they're not living for God. They know that. But they just believe that as long as that darkness is there, it's going to outweigh what that Bible says. Right? They have to be around the true word of God. And have to hear it for themselves and see it from one who is spiritual, right? As long as a person can make themselves believe, oh, I'm going to fix it later. I'm going to do this. That's everybody thinks that. Even atheists believe, hey, the next, I, I just got to make through this day and, and, and all to be well. Nobody thinking that they're going to die today. Who? Nobody. So do you see how that mind frame brain makes we don't have no fear for God? Because you look at it every day, you wake up. Some of y'all are 30 in your 20s and your teens, you know, older, up in age. And you've been waking up every day, right? So that deceives you. So that same mind frame makes you think that oh, I'm gonna get it right with God one day. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop sinning. I'm gonna stop masturbating. No, you're not, because you have control and power. They lied to you. Christianity was designed to make you see God's word in the bad light. That's facts. Ask anybody who is living in Christianity, and you show them God's word. They're going to be justifying. They're going to be getting angry. They're going to be trying to rebuttal because they wasn't taught the truth of God's word. I don't care what none of y'all say. That's facts. I'm telling you. That's why when you tell them the Bible, they're like, oh, no, you know, um, ain't nobody perfect. Like, how can you say like you could have some. Listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm challenging y'all. Go meet anybody who just became a quote unquote Christian. Right. And. And tell them exactly what the Bible says, right? And be like, look, you know the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible say, watch their response. Their response, I'm talking about when they in Christian, it's 99%. I and mean, you can go knock on anybody's door. It's going to be the same response, okay? I only know 1% that's living according to God's word on this earth, okay? So this is what I'm trying to explain to you. When you show anybody that word who claim to be a Christian, they immediately, instead of saying, man, that's what the Bible say, their reaction Immediately is like, oh, um, nah, you know, I, I'm gonna go read it in Greek. Um, uh, I'm gonna go look. For instance, I put it up here in the notes. Let me see if y'all can open that. It's right here in the notes. Look at this. I prove it to you. Look at this. This is in the notes. This is what somebody wrote on on Google. This is what Google says. I got it here in the notes. I got it here on, on my phone too, right? It's Courtney phone. Look what it says. It says, go and sin no more. It said, no, this is what Google says. Why did Jesus tell people to go and sin no more if sinless, if sinless is impossible? You see that? Now, he doesn't, this person, go on Google. Y'all see it for yourself. Okay? Make my life easier. You go on Google and see it for yourself. Okay? Now, you notice what the guy just wrote on Google, right? He don't have no Bible verse to support that we can't live sinless he's saying that then here you're gonna have somebody that's in christianity 
This their response. Okay? This their response. Okay? Look what it says. Jesus was not speaking of sin's perfection. He was warned against returning to sinful lifestyle choices. That does not make any sense. Let's read it again. Gee, this is the answer from Google. This is all on Google, y'all. See, y'all don't want to hear this stuff because y'all know it's too real. That's why y'all don't be wanting to hear it. That's why people get in and they'll, get, they'll leave out. They don't want to hear that truth. Look what it says. Jesus was not speaking of sinless perfection. He was warning against a return to sinful lifestyle choices. That doesn't make any sense. If he's warning a return to sinful lifestyle choices, that means sin no more. You see what I'm saying? They're going to find some way. Y'all not hearing me. Listen. Look at it for yourself. It's right here. This one. Okay? Read it for yourself. I got it in the notes up here. Let me see. Okay, it went away. You see what I'm saying? Why is somebody asking that? Because he wasn't brought to the Christian faith. That's why he's asking that. Why would it trouble him? What what's inside of him to move him and say, "Man, we can't be we can't be perfect." Why not trust if you came to God? And the Bible say, "With man it's impossible, but with God all things are possible." What is in you that would move you to go on Google outside of the Bible where the Bible is already being interpreted and it says, "Be perfect be holy as he is. Why would you think, why would it not be in you to believe that he has the power and the ability to do exceedingly above and beyond all that we think or can believe? Why would you not even think that it's possible for him to make you perfect when the sun rises and sets every day perfect? We breathe oxygen every day perfect. No man, no human, no animal, no creation has given us life but God. And you claiming to be a Christian. I'm not talking to an atheist. I'm not talking to a person who's a Muslim or a Buddhism. You said that you're a Christian. Why are you on Google asking? Well, if we, if how, why did it, why did Jesus Christ say go sin no more if, if being sinless is impossible? He said it. So now you should be examining your life. Wondering why you're not doing what your supposed Lord supposed to be saying, if that is your Lord. You should be wondering why you're not doing or you have trouble with doing what he commanded you to do. You, you should be wondering. But you don't have trouble doing what is said in Titus. Titus says to be subjective, right, to powers and principalities and obey magistrates. So... Clearly, if it says that in the Bible, to obey these things that are natural and from the world, it takes the same effort as it said in Titus. Some of y'all never been to prison. Some have never been to jail. And the Bible is telling you in Titus, be subject to principalities and powers and obey magistrates. If you couldn't obey, why would they say obey? You have proven that you can obey because you ain't broke the law. So why would God tell you to do what you can't do when it tells you to obey magistrates, be subject to the government? You understand? That's facts. That's right, Emma. Look what Emma just said. It's been taught from generation to generation that sinless is impossible and no one even challenges it or even looks in the Bible for themselves. The only reason I know this now is because of you. Otherwise, I would just still thought that because of my dad and grandma. Thank you, Emma. That's what Emma just said. You see what I'm saying? Look what she just said. That was important. No one looks in the Bible because they wasn't brought to the word of God. They was brought to a superstition, altered, watered down version. That's right, Emma, because it's right there. It says it. It said Job was perfect. They'll tell you, listen, Emma, they'll tell you off the dribble, off the jump, right? Nobody is perfect for Jesus. Like, that's, that's false. They said Job was perfect. Noah was perfect. 
It says it. It don't matter how you want to interpret it. It says heaven and hell. It don't matter how you want to interpret it. That's what it says. Don't sit here and tell me, oh, angels and demons. Man, I'm not hearing that. You read the Bible the way you read any other in book of instructions. When you read a manual, when you order something from Amazon, when you order something from the store and you got to put together, you read the same English words the way you read it in the Bible. Stop playing games. You possess. That's the devil in you. That don't make any sense. Everything else but the Bible, you understand it. No question. No Greek. No Hebrew. No Bible commentary. You understand it. But when you come to the Bible, now all of a sudden, oh, let me um, read it in Greek and Hebrew. Man, if it's translated, it should be the same word. Then that means whatever translation you're reading has been altered from its original state. That's facts. What are you talking about? Then you get to start saying, man altered it and, and, and they changed it and scribes. You ain't no Christian to be talking like that disrespectfully about God's word. That's facts. See, see, my wrestle's not against flesh and blood. So I know it's the darkness. That's why I'm coming at him. I ain't mentioning nobody. I ain't saying nobody name. The demons that's in you people, that's in the world, that's teaching this foolishness. The Bible say, all but that which is evil. Hate which that is evil. I hate darkness. I hate the devil. But I love human beings, right? God's creation. But I hate the darkness. You got to learn when you're a Christian, right? If you're saying you want to be a Christian, to separate the flesh from the spirit. I'm talking about in people. When you see the works of darkness, you know it's darkness that's in that person. You have to love the vessel, but you got to hate the darkness. It says, arbor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's the word. So look at what Emma just said. It's all been taught to us. None of us got in that Bible ourselves and seen it for ourselves. People get up here right now, man, brother, you know, ain't nobody could be perfect. They say that without, that's because that's what they want to believe. Because you got to understand, knowing that we can be what God said we can be according to his word, it means you got to accept the reality and change has to happen. They don't want to change. You don't understand that before this generation, I'm 36 years old. Before my life on this earth was, the word was already written. Before the church you go to today was, the Bible was already written. Before T.D. Jakes, Joe Osteen, Creflo, Geno Jennings, whoever, before they was, before a person thought to come up with a church name or pay tithing offerings, calling up, claiming to be a Christian, before women wanted to preach and to teach and pastors was over churches, before all this foolishness and trickery, the word of God was. You understand? See, y'all not faithful. Y'all not loyal. That's why I'm not friends with a lot of people, right? I, I, I don't really have no friends because you're not loyal. If you're not loyal to God, you can't be loyal to me. If you're not faithful to God, you can't be faithful in a friendship and a brotherhood to me. You're going to talk behind my back because you're sitting here talking about the word of God is altered or scribes and changed up stuff. How dare you? How are we going to get to heaven with you spreading these false lies? How will anybody receive salvation if the Bible is altered? That's the devil in you speaking. Listen what you saying. We don't have the authentic word of God. Then we can't go to heaven. The Bible specifically says, don't add to his word, nor take out of his word. If you add to his word, then you will be taken out of what? The book of life. So if you don't have the true word of God, we can't hear the true word of God to have true faith. And to know what we need to know. So when you say in the Bible is altered in Greek and Hebrew and all this stuff, that's weird. I'm not a believer. That guy on, on Google texting, uh, why is Jesus saying sin no more? That's what he said. He said what he said. Do you believe it or you don't? You telling me that something controls you when you commit sins. You saying when you go and pee that your penis get erect. Women, you saying when you go to the bathroom at work or at Walmart or whatever, you start having an orgasm because you wipe this stuff after you pee. No, you have an orgasm when you put sensation 
dildos, bob, whatever, or, or you touch yourself. Men, you have erections or you ejaculate sperm when you massage your penis and you think on lustful things. What are you talking about? You know sin is a choice. It's always been. Some days you want to drink. Some days you don't want to drink. Some days you want to smoke. Some days you don't want to smoke. Some days you feel like going to the mall, getting dressed up to get some numbers. Some days you don't. Some days you want to make a selfie and get some comments, women or men. So you take a picture, put your makeup on or do your hair, whatever, or no makeup, whatever, and take a selfie. You, you move by, by pride. Vainglory. That's fact. You understand? This is what I'm telling y'all. So who, look, look what Emma said. It's been taught, Emma said it's been taught from generation to generation that sentence is impossible. You know what else been taught, Emma? You should have added this, Emma, right? You should have added this. You know what else been taught? That we're going to always sin. That's the stupidest thing. When you can look at your life right now and some of y'all watching this haven't committed 20 sins in the last 20 days. Just because it wasn't beneficial or, or, or suitable for you. Like, you control what you do. When, before y'all was taught this fake version of God, when you had sex, did you not control who you was fornicating with? When you ate ice cream, when you went to a movie theater, when you cursed, when you bought something, when you did something, when you went somewhere, did you not control it? Ain't nobody control you. It's a choice. Why, why would they preach the word of God if it's not able to be applied? That's a waste of breath. Why would there be laws in this world, prisons, jails, if we couldn't obey them? That means it'd be, it wouldn't be right that people are even sitting in prison right now. Why are there judges? Why are there prosecutors and lawyers? If, if everybody's going to make mistakes and nobody is perfect, then why do they have jails? Why do the unbelievers have jails and they don't even believe in God? The Bible said the whole world lies in wickedness. But even this wicked world knows that you know right from wrong. Even the Bible say the Gentiles do by nature what's written in God's word. Showing the law written on their heart. Their conscience knowing right from wrong. It says that in the book of Romans. Go read it for yourself. Chapter 1, chapter 2. See for yourself. Read in Romans. The Gentiles do by nature what's written in the law. They know better. They was given the conscience. Cain knew that he killed uh, Abel. You didn't see him talking to God like he didn't know what he did. It wasn't no Ten Commandments back then. It wasn't no laws back in the book of Genesis. That didn't come till Exodus with Moses. And he still knew he did wrong. Everyone in Genesis knew they did wrong. Even when there was no laws or commands when they did it. Judah, sleeping with the woman. You know, they sold, they sold, they, they sold Joseph into slavery. They all was being convicted throughout their whole life. For what they did. Because it was instored in you to know right from wrong. When they sold Joseph into slavery. Jacob, sons. they When stuff was happening to them. Over and over. They was like, oh, God's rewarding us. Repaying us for our evil. Because we did our brother. We, we, started, we, we, thought we, we sold our brother into slavery. We, we, just, we did that to him. They knew it. They knew it. Because of their conscience. The Bible said they was getting ready to stone the woman. And Jesus said, he without sin cast the first stone. The Bible said they was convicted by their own conscience. And they left one by one. And he looked up and said, who, who here to, you know, you know, condemn you? She said, hey. He said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. You understand? So, just like Emma said, you were taught this. And it's, it sounds good. Because when you go and commit your sins, it gives you a justification. No one is perfect. We're always going to sin. Why are you always going to sin? How many of y'all married up here? So when you married your husband and wife, you thought he was going to cheat on you? When you sent your kids to college, you thought they were going to get killed? Like, what? you don't live as if you feel the world makes mistakes. Why do you drive in a car without any worry? Why do you work at a job without any fear? Why do you go to the mall, stores, anywhere without worrying about people just killing you like the purge? Because more people choose to be civil and to be law-abiding citizens than those who choose to break the law, right? There is more people on this planet 
that are living law-abiding lives than those who are incarcerated for committing crimes that go against the law. If nobody is perfect, explain to me why we have a justice system then. And it was, it was, it's unbelievers who are running it. Unbelievers who, who, who likes to watch UFC and boxing, jiu-jitsu, watch violent movies, comedy, all things that are evil and don't glorify God. But they still know in their selves that you have a choice to do right or to do wrong. They even know that. So you come in, you got 66 books, 27 in the New Testament that's teaching you how to have the mind of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. You have a Bible that is bringing, into, bringing you into the heart of God, the mind of God, the very essence of God, teaching you wisdom, knowledge, and instructions, just reading Proverbs and Psalms by itself. And you're sitting here to, well, no one is perfect. You are taught to love someone when they hate you. You're taught to look at your neighbors in a good light, no matter what they did to you. You're taught, if a person actually go one mile, go with them too. You're told to love your wife and be not bitter towards them. Women, you're told how to dress. You're told how to think. Women, you're told how to, how to, how to um, uh, love your house, love your husband, you know, and guide your household. Women, you're taught how to have a, a, a meek, a chaste spirit. You're taught that by the word. You look on TV, they're shaking their butt. You look around the world, they're wearing booty shorts. Look at the world, they're wearing tight clothes. The women, you're taught how to be different than that. Men, you're taught how to be loving. You're taught how to have patience with your children, men, through the Bible. You're taught, how, the Bible say, to not provoke your sons to anger, okay? You're taught to have compassion. You're taught to have patience. The rest of the world is getting angry and getting upset and getting mad. You are given instructions to have patience, to long suffering. Not only are you taught through the word of God, but you are given supernatural power and ability through the Holy Ghost. That's why these so-called Christians ain't talking like this because they're not given this treasure that's in an earthen vessel. That's why the words that I'm speaking, like what? That's impossible. That's right, because you don't have the spirit of the living God. But if you did, this becomes your life. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Do you not understand those words? If all things are, if all things pass away, behold, all things are new. A new way to talk, new way to think, new way to, to, to live, new way to function. And you get all that through the spirit. You see? So you're taught we're always going to sin. And nobody, just like, like my last teaching, I had Sarah on the phone and Sarah was like, when you listen to what the guy was saying, it didn't make no sense. But you've been taught to accept that. You've been taught to just become numb to, to, to what is being spoken and what is being said. That you don't even register that he's telling you that the, that the future is behind you. No, it's not. No matter how he wants to use some stupid knowledge to try to make it sound like it makes sense, it doesn't make sense. That's like saying the ocean is not wet. That's like saying, you know, oh yeah, the ocean is dry, but it's, the ocean is not really wet, but it's dry. You know what I'm saying? Like stupidity. The same way people, listen, I'm not talking about nobody. You hear me? I love my God. I love his word and I love his creation. Unknown caller. I love his creation. But tell me how it makes sense to put smoke inside your lungs. Tell me how it makes sense to drive a car at high speeds that goes against the natural. You see how it's so easy to go against what is true? You speed through a red light. You hit the gas through a yellow light and the yellow light means to slow down. You speed through it. You smoke a cigarette. You put in lung, you put in smoke in your lungs, but your lungs are designed before you even knew about science and before you even knew about your body or your organs. You know that water, nothing like water, hydrates you nothing like water makes the body feel better 
than water. Not even Gatorade, I don't care what it is. Okay, nothing like food does the body better than eating other stuff or not go going without eating. You learn that just from growing up. You don't even have to even know about science and the anatomy of the body. You just know from experience that water is something that your life depends on. So why would you drink liquor? Sarah was telling me yesterday, she was saying, you know, it shows you that people don't really have wisdom. I'm saying, I'm saying, Sarah, a lot of people don't have wisdom. They just function off of grace. They just here to play a role in this world. Somebody could, could know how to pay their bills on time and have a, a, a 800 credit score, but can't control their weight. You see the point I'm trying to make? It's too deep for y'all. The world has to be balanced. But when you come into the will of God, you'll have complete balance. You won't be over or under, but you'll be centered, balanced. You look at the world apart from God. Some people can have money, but don't have happiness. Some people can have money, but then they do reckless things to lose that money in one day. Some folks can make millions and then blow it all at the casino. See the point I'm making? So they don't have, they're not balanced. The world is balanced by God. By creating people to be able to, you got mechanics who can work on your car, right? And can fix your whole engine, but won't work on themselves to be in shape or be healthy. I'm not saying all, oh, I'm just saying, just, just giving examples. You can have a doctor telling you about, you know, that you have sickness and you got this and that, but he smokes a cigarette outside or he drinks or he sniffs cocaine. You understand what I'm saying? So this is how you know that everything was just put in place to make the world be the way God wanted to be. Okay, little grace here, little grace there to keep the world functioning. Okay, police will tell you don't break the law, but they're speeding as they're driving. They, they, they arrest you, they're cursing, they're angry. They get tattoos, they're, they're listening to rap music and rock metal, heavy metal. I can do is look at YouTube videos, you know, they be cursing, they be angry, you know, they be punching people. I'm not, I'm just saying it happens. So these aren't people, you know what I'm saying? It becomes a job to people. So this is the point I'm making. Christianity was designed to make it to where you hate God's word the way the demons hate God's word. They couldn't erase God's word, but it created a function to deceive many people and bring you in so that when the word is preached or when the word is, is, is spoken, it won't be received because you have grown accustomed and have grown fondness to what is not of God's word. You heard what Emma said. We've been taught. We, they, she was even taught from her dad and her grandma, you know those things but they not you can't show it in scripture okay remember let me get into my title because it you know it'd be a long time the title was this i want you to understand the title where it talks about you know contradiction people don't understand that when they're saying things well i'm a true christian so you're not going to get away with saying things that's not biblical okay that's not the way we talk philippians 127 tells you that but you're not a christian right Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's where it come from, Justin. Justin said, hate God's word the way demons hate God's word. That's deep. I'm telling you. It's just the way you express it will be different, though, because you still have a conscience. A demon don't have a conscience. Satan don't have a conscience. That's why he said he's a murderer. He's been a, he's a, you know, he's a liar. You know, all those things. He's a, he's a thief. He comes and kills, still destroy. He doesn't have a conscience. You have a conscience. That's why it's a wrestle. That's why when, you know, you do what you love, you might feel that conviction. Right. That only comes from the conscience. You might commit sins and do certain things. And you might say, OK, I got to stop doing this. That's just the conviction part. See, Satan don't have that. So when the darkness, see, demons, they hate God's word. You hate it, too. Just the reality is, is that you can't you can't have that numbness that the demons have because you're still created from God and you was given a conscience. And it's nothing that is nothing that God's word is saying for you to do that will hurt you and injure you. But because, you know, you like darkness and you live for the world, right? You like to sin, right? And it brings you comfort. Doing God's way takes away that pleasure, that joy, that happiness that you find in sin. So because you're not a demon and you're not the devil, this is why you still have conviction even when you do sin. Because this is what is going to follow you to the grave. That's anybody, even atheists. They get convicted. Remember, this wasn't Christians in the, in, in the four Gospels who were who were ready to stone the woman. 
They were Jews. They were people who probably claimed to be Pharisees, Sadducees, whatever the case may be. These were so-called religious people. And they were convicted. So the point I'm trying to make to you, you don't have to hear the gospel to be convicted. Conviction, I just told you, look, listen to me. I just told y'all what it said in the book of Romans, right? It said the Gentiles. Gentile means non-Jewish people, non-believers, okay? In the book of Rome, Romans. Okay? Go to Romans chapter 2. Okay? Romans 2 real quick. And I, 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 I got to get into this so I don't, my phone don't die. Okay, let me put a Bible, let me put a Bible up using Courtney phone. Romans 2. Okay? Excuse me. Romans 2. Okay. And something else I want to talk about too. Okay? I just read something, so I want to talk about Romans 2. Start at verse 14. Okay? It says, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are law unto themselves. Listen now. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts, meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. See? So that's how you understand why the world, this is why they tell you it's PG-13. That's just God's grace. That's the conscience. That's not allowing, the Bible already tells you the whole world lies in wickedness. But you know God still has his hand over the world to where it won't become like the purge. If God was to remove his hand, and the Bible tells you the spirit that now worketh in the of disobedience, Right? If God didn't have his grace, you know, somewhat over this world, there would be no police officers. There would be no, like nothing. You understand? Corruption will be running supreme. So it's the grace that makes it to where, you know, people act, you know, um, civil, ethical, right? You just, you just read it. I mean, I just read it to you. Romans 2, start at verse 14, right? So... This is how you understand why people will say, well, killing somebody is wrong. That's what God, that's what God put in the earth. Okay. But because God put it in the earth, then the demons make it to where, okay, well, they know that killing somebody is wrong if it's not justified. So let's make movies so people can, cause they, this is what, you know, this is what's inside of them. So it's basically like this. You're being controlled to some extent, right? Just, just You're doing your own thing, but I'm just saying. The demons in you need to feed off of what they live for. And that's sin and darkness. So what happens is, is to help fight against your conscience, they merge themselves with you, right? That's why a lot of times the saying, the slings, the certain talk, the snappiness, the rolling the eyes, this is all the way the demon basically expresses itself through people. Right? Some things can't be like, for instance, some demons are so powerful inside of people that a man could be greatly embedded in lust and anger, but you won't catch those things with your naked eye on the outside. The demon has the power and the ability to make it to where it's harder to be seen. Their sins are harder to be seen than others because how they want that person to be portrayed in the eyes of people. Right? Especially if you're in darkness too. Because just because you're in darkness don't mean that one day you can't come from that place if the grace is there. So the demons know that. And they can't make they can't do things so obvious because you'll catch those things. Right? So that's the way Satan works. Is to make it to where you see things, right? 
not the way you should. So when you're going to a movie theater, you're thinking that, oh, it's just a movie. It's not bad. That's what he wants you to believe. But you're keeping that door open for greater darkness, greater anxiety, greater fear. Think about it. You go watch a, a horror movie. Then for the rest of your life, you remember Candyman. Don't say his name seven times. You remember the Blair Witch Project. You go camping somewhere, right? You see what I'm trying to show you? Like, you're not, it, it, it might be too deep, right? I'm not being funny saying that. But it might be going over your heads what I'm trying to explain to you. They keep the darkness open in you. You go watch the Blair Witch Project. Then you want to go camping one day. So you're at a campground. And it's nighttime. You all walk to the bathroom, right? And the bathroom is you got to have a light. The first thing you start thinking, I'm going to see a monster. I'm going to see, you know, uh, somebody going to kidnap me. You start having all these thoughts in your mind. That's what they want. Long as your mind is fixated on the things of the world, you'll never have peace. Long as you're living in lust, you'll never have true love. Long as you're living in anger, you'll never have true happiness. Long as you're living in pride, you'll never have uh, true contentment because only glory belongs to the Lord. You weren't designed to have glory. You weren't designed to be praised. So anything you do that's opposite of God, that's why when you look at the devil, right? And you hear about depression and anger, frustration, laziness, fear. Those are all the natures of the devil. You don't never see feelings and emotions is of darkness. You don't never see in the Bible where they're talking about having feelings and emotions. Where? The Bible said the fruit of the spirit is what? Those things are all of the flesh. When you're born again, those emotions and feelings and all that stuff is gone. You cannot be an ambassador for Christ. You cannot be out here preaching and teaching and mock God. God don't second. God is not slacking when he's preaching his word, living his. You no, know, like you see how God carry himself. Everything is and he's in an order. Everything is perfect. You thinking God going to send you out here to let, look like the rest of the world. And you're saying I'm sent by God. It's like a company saying they employing you without giving you a uniform. Think about when you work at a company, you have a dress code. You, you got you to be there at a specific time. You got to talk a certain way. You got to act a certain way. You represent that company. You understand? You're not coming in no company just doing what you want to do. That's not happening. Nowhere on this planet. You understand? So even police officers got to have a haircut. They got to be a certain weight. Even in the military, you got to be a certain weight. You just ain't going to be in here and be 500 pounds. Talking about you a soldier for the U.S. It's not happening. There's policies. So you even see with the word of God, you see how I talk about how women, you know, dress and men adore themselves and, you know, women adore themselves and how our hair is supposed to be. You're not just, even the Bible say that, that those who are believers are supposed to have a good report of those who, without. That means unbelievers. So even God is word, even God wants the unbelievers to look at you and only have a good report, not look at you and have a bad report. That's the word of God. So he cares about our appearance. He cares about, even the Bible talks about not to overeat, not to be gluttonous. So he don't want you to be overweight. So you're telling me that you can just do whatever you want to do as a Christian. Christianity taught you that. You can't, you ain't supposed to be overweight. You ain't supposed to be having bad hygiene. You're not supposed to not take care of yourself. Like you, the Bible say, present your body as a living sacrifice. Okay. Holy and acceptable. The Bible say that your body belongs to the Lord. So you're going to just, oh yeah, God, this is the best I can give you. No. You see what I'm saying? They don't live for God. That's why they don't have no hope to live for God. You see? So the world knows, the world has darkness in them. That's why they make the movies and the comedies and the TV shows. Because that's the way the darkness that's inside of them can scratch that itch. So the darkness inside of them can eat, so to speak. Like how your stomach grumble, the darkness in you grumble. That's why you got to sin. You got to gossip. You got to shop online all the time. You got to spend money that you don't have. You got to overspend, live above your means. You got to lie. You got to be prideful. You got to get angry. That darkness has to come out some kind of way. Us having the spirit, the light of God comes out of us. This is why we're constantly talking righteousness. And those who are false Christians are constantly making excuses for their unrighteousness. We're not making excuses. We're not, we, we don't think that God can't do it. They don't believe God can do it. That's how you know that they were brought to Christianity and not brought to the Christian faith. Okay, let's move on. It's 419, where I'm at. 
Okay, so we read in Romans 2, right? Let's go back to my message. You have been taught about God's word and you, you have been taught about God's word in a, as a contradiction. The way you misspeak God's word is a contradiction. It doesn't make any sense. That's the whole point. They'll say it's not possible, this and that. So contradiction means what? A combination of statements, ideas, or features of a situation that are opposed to one another. Opposite a person or a thing that is totally different from them. Same position opposite to one already made. And you know one thing about people who are living as false Christians? They don't want to be like Christ. They want to be like what was told to them that Christ was. Not what the Bible said that Christ was. That's why you heard what Emma said. Whenever you tell people about what is required by the word of God, they always try to find an outside source to bring them comfort, right? And to change what they read in the Bible. They go to the Google or they go to the Greek or they go read these Christian books and novels, false Christian books and novels to give them comfort because what they read, it troubled them. So they go and say, let me go read it. Then they start looking at, then you got to think there's so many people in this world that's just like a false Christian. That, okay, you got false Christians. So there's 2 billion false Christians. So that means that you're going to always find something that supports your delusion or your lack of faith in Jesus on the internet or even around you. You go ask somebody right now, can we be perfect? They're going to tell you 99% going to say no. You come to Brother Ronald and the other 1%, we're going to tell you yes. That's what the Bible say. You understand what I'm saying? So you're going to always find something that supports what the Bible don't say. Because the whole world, even your neighbors, even your mom, your dad, lies in wickedness. The Bible said light came into the world, but men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Why did they kill Jesus? Because of the truth that was spoken. He didn't do anything. Even Pilate said this man hasn't done anything worthy of death. It was the words that they couldn't stop. It destroyed their 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 image. It destroyed, it exposed, you know, their, their faulty foundations. Something in my eye. It exposed their faulty foundations, right? It destroyed their false beliefs. It exposed darkness in their life. That's why John said that in 1 John 1 and 6. People misinterpret that. He said, if you walk in darkness, if you claim you have fellowship and walk in darkness, you lie and not know the truth. And he say, if you say you have no sin. He's talking to the Jews. That's why he never greeted them, but never mind. I, t I told him that already, okay? I've been having to repeat myself over and over all day long. You know, I got the teeth up there that they don't want to believe. That's because I'm fighting against the world. That's because I'm fighting against the world of non-believers, even those who claim to be believers. The two billion on Google are non-believers. The, the rest of the billion on the earth are non-believers. So I got, I got, I got, I got bullets coming at me on both sides. Those who claim to be Christian, claim to be Christians, they attack me. Those who don't claim to be Christians, they attack me too, because they are everybody is offended by the word, except for those who truly want to believe. That's facts. So you've been taught these things, you never examined it. That's why you see rappers wearing Jesus pieces. Little Boosie had a a, a charm of the of the Holy Bible. I mean, if he just read it for one minute, anywhere in the New Testament, he would have seen where that's that's not appropriate. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He would have seen that that's not of God, you know, to make a mockery of God. But I'm not talking about him. I'm just showing you how what he believes about God was taught to him through a superstition. He wants to live his life in sin and don't want any bad to happen. So he was taught by his grandmama or them people in Louisiana right where he's from baton rouge hey show love to god he'll bless you you'll you become a a, a a a bigger rapper you'll get a bigger platform boosie i'm gonna make me a bible i'm gonna make me a bible a holy bible charm for god come on brother you really want to if you really want to know what will bring glory to god is by living for him by not living in sin being obedient living righteous holy and godly okay applying this word okay so that's why I said the way people live, it's a contradiction. The way they talk about God, oh, we're always going to sin. That's a contradiction. What is the point of the gospel if nobody can obey it? Why are they, listen to me. Another thing I want to speak on too, all these fake YouTube channels of these so-called Christian people that's exposing other Christian people. I mean, you, I know what I'm talking about. You go on YouTube right now, they call in T.D. Jakes and Joel and Creflo to Antichrist and all this stuff, right? 
these people that have these channels, right? They are move. They are doing those things by pride, and they think that that they're perfect, right? They think that they think that 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 they're correcting these people, right, for what they're doing. But then the same thing is these same people. If you were to ask them, do everybody commit sins? They'll be like, yeah, right. They'll be like, yeah. So then. If everybody commits sins and everybody makes mistakes, according to the false Christian contradictive teaching, right? Then let me ask y'all a question. Why is any of these so-called Christian people who proudly and boldly say that no one is perfect, then why are they making videos about people who claim to be Christians that are doing things wrong? Does it make sense? Or is that not hypocrisy? Is that not being a hypocrite? Think about it. If you ask 99% of those who claim to be Christian, you heard what Emma just said. My dad and my grandmama taught me this, that nobody could be perfect. So then why are there YouTube channels? Why are there these denominational and non-denominational false pastors in their churches? Why is Gino Jennings, these people talking about people when they don't promote living perfect? I'm up here telling you that we don't live in sin. So I'm qualified to speak on it. It doesn't make me a hypocrite. I'm not telling you to pay tithes and offerings. I'm not going to church on Sunday. Church is every day. I'm with the believers in the book of Acts. I'm not with these people that's claiming to be Christian today. They fake. The Bible said they, they, they fellowship daily. Ain't no way in the Bible said go to church today. It was every day. We can't get enough of hearing about the Lord. You ain't see how they was crying and, and holding on Paul's neck. Weeping and crying. No, they won't see his face anymore. You don't do that when you go see your pastor at church. You understand what I'm saying? They seen him as a true man of God, Apostle Paul. You see how the woman kept begging Paul to come to her house. She begged him and said, come, you see me faithful. Come to my house. Let me keep y'all. They begged the Lord to stay with them. You understand? So what I'm telling you is that the people today... They don't believe in the word of God. That's why when they hear it, they're so affected by it. You've been taught wrong. You're defending a lie. And you've been taught to hate the truth. Woe unto you that call evil good. Jesus said it. You know we all... Listen, I just seen this guy. Listen, no, y'all gonna think I'm lying. Okay, hold on real quick. Y'all gonna think I'm, telling, I'm not telling the truth. I'm gonna prove it to y'all. Okay, let me show you how it works. God gave me this right before I got on, on face I got on Facebook. Let me show y'all. Remember that guy Rico in my last video? I didn't oh I didn't screenshot that. Okay, let me go back. Okay, come on, brothers. I'm still um I'm still here. Hold on real quick. Watch this. Watch this real quick. Then pull my name up. This is Courtney phone. Pull my name up. Let me go to my last teaching. Okay. Watch what I watch watch what I show y'all real quick. You remember Justin? Okay. Well, I want y'all to go nowhere. Watch this. I'm gonna prove it to y'all that I'm not telling y'all no lie. That people were brought to falsehood. I'm gonna prove it. Watch. Just give me one second. Just be patient. I'll be patient. I'll be up here for hours to telling y'all all this stuff. I don't complain not one bit. Okay? Remember the guy Rico from last time? Just say you remember him. If y'all don't remember, go to my last video where I was talking about uh, the false teaching. Okay? I want to show y'all something real quick. Okay, I want to show something real quick. I'm sure show how pride works. And the reason why I'm saying this, to get, remember, I always got to show y'all the truth. Okay, let me pull up this brother's photos real quick. Okay. Watch this. Right, I'm getting there. Okay. This is why God made me screenshot it. I screenshot it way before I got up here. Okay. All right, let me go down. Okay, right here. Okay. 
Yeah, just go back and watch it. Okay, look at them. Look at them. Okay, that's his wife, right? All I want for Christmas. All I want for Christmas. This, this is Rico's wife, okay? See the kids dressed up in Christmas outfits, right? We know that Christmas is of the devil, right? Nowhere in the Bible... Okay. Nowhere in the Bible do you see the word Christmas or the name Christmas. Okay. Now. Okay, let's go back to the top. Pull up the photos. What did I look at? Uploads. Okay, so y'all seen that picture, right? Of um, his children dressed up. And I seen a picture too earlier of them all dressed in like matching Christmas outfits. Okay. Albums, cover photos. Maybe it was profile pictures. Okay, let's go back up. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's go back to... Now, y'all seen that one picture with them, the wife put it up there. So I'm gonna go back to her page. Okay, there she go right here. Okay. Now, all right, here we go. Look at her page, the wife page. To God be all the glory. Right? God is faithful. So you see both of them are claiming to be of God. Okay? This, this was last year. Tis the season. See, for, see a big Christmas tree, right? Okay? I'm showing this for a reason. Okay? Y'all see that, right? Now... So you clearly see that they 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 celebrate Christmas. Okay? Celebrate Christmas. Now, so we know that Christmas is not of God. But let me show you how the delusion works in the life of these false Christians. Okay? This is why yesterday he was up there saying, I'm a Christian, brother. I'm a Christian. Look what he got on his page though. <laughs> Look, we got on this page. I am a Christian. I do not celebrate Halloween. You see, see what I'm trying to say? Because Christianity tells you that Halloween is bad. Not the word of God. You, you see what I'm trying to show you? That's why they don't believe that what they're doing is wrong. Because what they was told was right and wrong comes from their false religion. Right? Their false belief. So that's why you see the man is telling you that the man is telling you that he doesn't celebrate uh, Halloween. But you see him celebrating um, Christmas, which was both came from demons. Both came from the devil. OK. But he celebrates it now. OK, let me give you this one real quick. Let me see. Can we get this real quick? See, look at this guy right here. This is the post that he this is the post that he shared. That's Marcus Rogers, right? See the point I'm making? S super big platform. 
You see his post? Merry Christmas to all of you. My house, we going crazy right now. It's midnight. I'm dropping a new song called Flexed Up, right? <laughs> I'm saying, you click on this guy. Let's look at let's look at his um his platform. Okay? Can y'all read? How many followers? 300,000 and how many? There you go. So now y'all understand what the point I'm trying to make. He said this was that was his post. Remember? That was his post about Halloween. Look. Look. Look up here. So he was sharing Marcus Rogers' post. I'm a Christian. I do not sell ha ha Halloween. You see what I'm saying? They go about establishing their own righteousness. That's right, Justin. Justin said, darkness picks and chooses. He's being deceived. It's making him think Halloween is back. It's okay. That's what I'm trying to show you. Because it's taught to be okay. Christmas is taught to be okay. Halloween is taught. That's why they call it trunk or treat. So Halloween is taught. That's the darkness for you. Remember in my other teaching, I said they got to give you some things, right? That, that, that you just despise and, you, and that you stand on. So it makes you feel that you're spiritual. A true Christian won't celebrate none of that stuff because it's not in the Bible, not even Christmas. But they celebrate Christmas, Marcus Rogers, this guy, Rico, because it's portrayed to be for Jesus. They portray to live for Jesus while they live in sin and live in darkness. See, the picture of Christmas looks okay. It looks, it looks safe. It looks peaceful. But the inside, the story behind it is darkness. Look it up. Halloween is portrayed evil, jack-o'-lanterns, goons and goblins and skeletons. It's portrayed evil. These people ain't spiritual. They, they, they're controlled. Puppets on strings. They see Halloween as being bad because the natural eye sees it as being bad. They see Christmas as being good because the natural eye sees it as being good. But when you look at both of them, they wicked and evil. And both talk about spirits and darkness. Google it. Where Christmas came from. You know why we got Christmas today mixed in Christianity? Because people like these people. Portraying to be Christians and still being worldly. He dropping a new song called Flex on him. Flex up whatever he said. He's worldly. 390,000 followers. Seeing that post and think it's okay. You see what I'm, the point I'm making? They don't believe in the Bible because why would they celebrate what they don't see in the Bible? Because they worldly. They're only put on these pedestals by the devil. God didn't exalt them. The devil did. Listen, let's get back on Rico. Okay. Look at Rico pages though. You have your, 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 your loved one dressing like this for the 18th birthday. Okay. That's Rico's page. And his name is C. Swag as a Christian. He's at basketball games. Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2 says what? Say some things above. He called this man soft in his post. 2003, he called him soft. Just soft. No points in the second half. Shaking my head. Ain't no Christian talk like that. Why are you calling that man soft? Right? He loves the world. Raider Nation. We out here. Okay? Look at this. They were ready to talk. Happy New Year with a big old bottle. Right? Wine in his hand. You see why they, he got on my page? I'm proving it to y'all. Justin, you with me, Justin? Come on, I know somebody got to be with me. You see why he got up there, Justin? Now go to Brother Ronald Pay. I'm not, I'm not putting myself on no... Listen, I'm nobody, man. I just love my God. The same way you love your kids and you love your wife, your husband, or you love your job, you love food, you love... Whatever you love, that's the way I feel towards God, just without the sin and the evilness. You understand? So you can relate to me. I love God for what he did. I had high blood pressure. I was being attacked by demons. You know, I was on the verge of death. I had all these health problems. I don't got no medical insurance. I don't got no sick days. None of those things. My kids, everything is well. My marriage, everything is well because of the grace of God. I owe him. What would you do if somebody rescued you and took you from the, from the gutter, from, from, from the desert? From sickness, from this, from that, to the, I had high blood pressure. 
and he changed me. I'm, you think I'm not going to tell people about that and it's free? <laughs> you understand? What kind of person would I be to go from being a gang leader, a drug dealer, a rapper, Brick Squad, Monopoly, you know, to now, like, come on, what, what would you expect if I just disappeared from that life and just, oh yeah, I'm just living for God. I got the Holy Ghost now. Yeah, forget all y'all. Like, no, it's my duty and obligation to bring glory to my God. You see, these are the people that's always commenting on my page. Look at their mouth. Are you going to call a man soft? We don't talk like that. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. You don't call nobody no punks. All of them be talking like that. Farrakhan, Geno Genesis, they all be talking like that. These wussies and these, like, you don't talk like that. That's the world. That's the devil in you. Y'all only being deceived because you don't know God's word. Jesus didn't act that way. He didn't talk that way. You understand? So listen, this is what they, this is what, this is what Rico was talking about the other day. He was talking about walking in the spirit. Okay. And you hear other people say, oh, we got to die daily. We got to understand your videos on YouTube as Roulette Gotti and you know it's night and day. You had it all in the world. I still watch a video or two here or there just to see the reality of how God can change people. That's Justin. Justin just wrote that. He's talking about when you go on YouTube and type in my old name, Roulette Gotti, how you see all my old videos and how I was living, how I was moving, you know, with Walker, with Brick Squad. You know, Gucci man, all that stuff. Okay? To what God has done now. That's why you that's why I'm telling you this is from the kindness of my heart. I don't get anything from from, from people. It comes from the Lord. Okay? Now listen, I want to explain something to y'all. Okay? Something I want to explain to y'all. When the word of God was being preached back then, as it's supposed to be preached today, okay, it's introducing you to a righteous lifestyle. When you go get your drivers, when you go to the DMV. Wherever it's called in your state. So I know in Ohio it's called BMV. I know in Atlanta it's called DMV, right? So when you go to the DMV, BMV, whatever, to get your license, you first have to study, right? Take the pre-test, you know, the, the handwritten test, whatever, whichever one you're doing on the computer. Then once you pass that, you make an appointment, right, to go and do your driver test. So you agree with me that when you learn something, you don't keep a book around you every day of what you learned, right? Like when you learn how to drive, like I'm in a car right now, right? So I got my light right here, I got the horn right here. You know, I got the the, the, the thing to put it in, the, 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 the gear, the stick to put it in gear. Like I don't need, I don't, I don't have no DMV book around me, but it's committed to heart. I know when I come to a stop sign, I'm supposed to stop behind the stop sign. You understand? I know when I come to a red light, I'm supposed to stop. I know I'm supposed to signal before I, I, I get over in my lane. And I get over in the lane I want to get in. I know I post a signal and wait about a hundred and go about a hundred feet before I get over so they can see me. You don't just signal and get straight over. I'm just telling you what's in the, in the, in the books. I'm 36 years old. All right. I had my license for many, many years. So all I'm trying to explain to you is this. I have never went and took that test over. I have never. Once I, once I learned what I need to learn and I passed the test and I passed my driving test. I never. I don't even know where that DMV book is at. You're telling me that this is the Bible that you're supposed to read every day and you're still saying you can't get it right. But you go take a driving test. Can, do any of y'all got y'all driving books y'all had when y'all got your license? Some of y'all that's my age and older or even younger. Do, do anyone got their license last year? Do you or do you got your your DMV book, the driver's manual in a, in a, in a, in a picture frame? Do y'all got it, you know, hanging from the wall? Do y'all got it nailed to the wall? Do, I mean, do y'all got it? You know, in your car, like when you, how people put their Bibles in the dashboard. Like, are you riding around with the driver's man? Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, this is the point I'm making. <laughs> Emma said, I don't know anyone who has. That's what I'm saying. But y'all, do y'all agree with me? That we all had to study it at one point in time. So once we learned the curriculum and once we rememberized it and we put it into our mind, Right. When it came time to take the test, we remembered, okay, signal, look, look, right? 100 feet, go up, and then get over. Coming to a red light. Remember, you got that drive shot. What about when the instructor's the, the inside the car with you? You slow down. You know what I'm saying? He, on, he looking at you. He, she, or he, right? So it's the same thing. 
You gotta understand these words in the Bible are not gonna change. They're not telling you to keep putting this in practice every day. They're introducing you to a new way of thinking. Once you do it, it becomes who you are. The Bible clear, I'm gonna read all of this. So when, they, when you're hearing people misquote, that we gotta die daily, they're not reading the whole scripture. When you when you misquote, we gotta walk in the spirit. Why is say walk if we can? It's telling you that if you do this, you won't do this. If you're a law-abiding citizen, you won't go to jail. Like you're not understanding that. Like who walks around? Like let me ask y'all a question. Emma, you way in Australia, right? So we're gonna we're gonna do it like this. Where can you find a book that got all our laws that's just in the world? I mean, in our country. Like what? I mean, like who's walking around with a law book? Like, we know that we're not supposed to do things because it was told to us. Even if we never even went and read all, okay, what are all the laws in America? Okay, you can't steal, you can't this, like, some of y'all don't even know all the laws in your country, in your state. But because you act uh, um, civil and because you, you know, you, you, uh, you don't act disorderly, you don't, you don't break the law. Like, it's some things you don't even know that's a, that's, that's a, that's against the law, but because you keep the same routine every day and you're not doing things out of the ordinary, you won't, you don't even know if you, if some things you don't even know if it's a law or not because you're in order, right? You're doing the same thing every day. You get in your car, you know, you put your seatbelt on, the speed limit says this, the speed limit says that, you know, you come to a stop sign, you come to a, a four way session, you put your signal on, you beep your horn, you know, you, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Like you're not driving up and parking your car, you know, in front of the door at the gas station. Like the door you walk in at the gas station or Walmart, you're not parking right in front of them poles that's there to protect people from, you know, from running into the store. You, you, you park in the parking spot. So you see, like, you don't even got to be told by the security guard police. Hey, whoop, 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 move your car. Even when you, even in front of Walmart, they got the yellow lines. You're not supposed to park there. People do it anyway, right? But they know what they're doing is wrong. Ain't nobody... Ain't nobody leaving their car right in front of Walmart and shutting it off with a hazard on and going to shop for 30 minutes. Like, who's doing that? They know they're supposed to park that car. Usually people are sitting in the car. Oh, I'm waiting on my wife. I'm waiting on my husband. I'm waiting on my, my, my child. I'm waiting on about to pick somebody up. I'm, I'm going to move it, brother. I'm, I'm going to move on down. I'm, 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 I'm going to do a U-turn. You understand? They know it. Like, some things you would never stumble across because you live ethical. You're just doing what, you know, makes sense to you. You understand? Most cars are parked in parking spots, not in front of stores, not in front of most cars. You go to Walmart, Kroger's, Publix, the mall. Where are cars parked? They're parked in parking spaces. So you don't you don't see nobody parking in the, the mall sidewalk Ain't nobody parking in the doors that the mall go into. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't even got to worry about getting a ticket. You don't even got to worry about what law you broke. You don't even got to worry about, you know, what kind of citation you might get because you parked on the side. You understand what I'm saying? Because you're doing things that make sense. So when you read, when you hear the word of God saying, don't fornicate, you don't got to keep saying, I'm not supposed to fornicate. Faith comes by hearing. And hear my word of God. It's, it makes sense. So you post it, okay, I'm not supposed to fornicate. Okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not supposed to drive on the grass. I'm not supposed to do the speed, uh, speed uh, go faster than what the speed limit is. It makes sense. So you just uh, put it into, you put it into effect. So you got to think if, if I go to Texas for 10 years and I come and I go to a living church, church of God, right? Where the things in the book of Acts are being manifested in that church. And they want me to come out there and visit them and, you know, you know, fellowship them for, for a few days or a few weeks, right? When I preach the word of God, I'm going to be saying the same thing that's in the Bible, whether or not they have the Holy Ghost. You don't get segregated. They're not. Listen. <laughs> if there's 30 people right now that got the Holy Ghost right here and 30 right here in the church who just came the first day, everybody's going to hear the same thing. You understand? It's righteous living. You don't, there's, you're not having to repeat yourself to say, hey, guys, remember. That's why when you read scriptures, I, listen, if I had enough time, which I don't, I will read one whole chapter to you out of the New Testament. You never see these brothers. I'm talking about, I'll read the whole uh, book, whichever, Ephesians, Philippians, but you do it yourself. Okay, I challenge y'all. When I get off of this um, this Facebook Live, I challenge you. Go to any epistle in the New Testament. Okay? Read if Paul is saying, hey, I know you guys got fear. 
I know you guys got anxiety. I know you guys are still having sex. I know you guys are still struggling sometimes. They never write that. They tell you what not to do, and then they move on. That's it. If you go to a different chapter, it's a new topic. They're not saying this is a, a letter being written. They're not sitting here telling you, God's going to bless you, your breakthrough, your setbacks. I know people are doing you wrong. They tell you, look, love your neighbor as yourself. So there's no conversation. If I love you, then how can anything else come in? Y'all hear me? If you love your children, how can anything else come in? So if I love my neighbor as myself, how can bitterness overpower love? How can resentment overpower love? How can hate overpower love? It can't. Love means an intense feeling, a deep affection. And if you have that, how will these other things come in and, and, and rule and dominate? That means love wouldn't be there. The only way those things can rule and dominate, it means that love can't be there. Because if you got love, the Bible say, per love, perfect love casts out what? Okay? It say those have been perfected in love. So if you have love, just think about it. How is it possible? So when you're hearing the word of God, it's an introduction. Think about when they was preaching. Y'all got to get married. Turn from them sins. Live for Jesus. Love the Lord with all your mind. You don't got to say that every day. Once you tell me to love the Lord with all my heart, my soul, my strength, that's okay. I'm doing that if I got faith. If I don't got faith, I'm not doing it. And if I'm just faking it, then I'm going to keep saying I'm working towards it. The Bible doesn't talk as repeating itself. Look at it. I'm going to read it, okay? So let's look at what it talks about for dying daily. Because everybody think that means... Another thing, dying does not mean not committing sins. People, you see how the false Christian... Oh, the Bible said we got to die daily. Okay, what does it mean to die daily? What was Paul tells you what it means. You don't know what it means because you've been taught by false pastors. But remember, the Bible say... We explain, we compare spiritual with spiritual, right? The Bible says that spiritual is the deep things of God. So the Bible is not a contradiction, okay? Remember, they all preach the same word. So Paul, John, James, Peter, Jude, they, they, couldn't, say, they couldn't say different things. That means everybody would have been hearing different things. Then you would have had denominations like you have today. That's why you got denominations because everybody is coming, teaching their own altered version of the Bible. Everybody, Okay. That's why you got denominations and non-denominations and Jehovah Witnesses and some of Adventists, all this foolish, weird stuff that's not of God, that can't be found in the Bible. And they make themselves see what's not there. You understand? So look. Okay, so we're going to talk about walking in the Spirit. We're going to talk about what how they say die daily. And we're going to talk about also towards, towards the end. We're going. I got 11% on this phone. We're going to talk about, um, you know, uh, how the when they preach to the people... They were talking about their life of sin in a past tense way. They're never talking about living a life of sin in the present tense or future tense. It's always past tense. I'm going to show you all the verses. Remember, the Bible's not a lie. I don't care what you've been taught. You heard what Emma said. She said, we've been taught. So she knows it's true. I ain't got to sit here and, and tell y'all whether you, you want to accept the word of God or you don't. You claim to be a Christian today. You just see what the Marcus Rogers got in Regal God. They're talking about Halloween is bad, but they celebrate Christmas. Christmas is, Christmas is even worse than Halloween. You know why? Because it's, it's complete mockery of Jesus. Halloween is some made up stuff with jacklins and goons and goblins, whatever. But it's complete mockery. You know who they serve. The devil. Why would they not look at Christmas in the bad light when it's mocking Jesus? They talking about it's not for Santa Claus. Yes, it is. Y'all false Christians brought in Jesus' name. It was already theirs first. Do your research. Okay? Y'all fact check everything else. Okay? We got to food is processed, processed meat. We got to eat organic apples and tomatoes. Okay, go fact check where, where Christmas came from. It was talking about good old St. Nick, as y'all say. Then it brought in, then y'all brought in Jesus in a mockery. That's facts. Look it up. Look it up. Tell me if I'm lying. Okay. Galatians 5, verse 16. Watch what it says. Then I say, Walk in the spirit. Listen, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if you're if this is your first time hearing God's word, as it was their first time hearing it. Right. Many of these epistles was the first time that Paul spoke to these people. Right. Or he re, he they, they became believers. And this is his his first letter writing unto them. Okay. 
So he's given them all the instructions. They became believers. They continued, you know, with him. They were baptized. You know, some received the Holy Ghost. Some didn't receive the Holy Ghost. So now he's giving them more. Remember, you got to understand the Bible. Uh, when we're reading it, this is the beginning. Right. Of of the church of God. When you're seeing all this stuff being taught to these people, this is all being taught to them to live for God, to do what he wants them to do, to be obedient, to be compliance. Right. So they're learning the same way you learn how to drive, the same way you learn how to cook, the same way you learn how to tie your shoe. You don't keep somebody don't keep telling you to do bunny ears. You tie your shoe without even without even looking. Right. You 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 drive. Nobody has to tell you to, to stop at a red light. That's the same way the word of God supposed to be. OK, so it's a, it's so a lot of these letters is after he visits some of these people. Right. Some he might not never seen, you know, in, 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 in you know, personally. Right. So he's writing these letters. So he's telling them what God will happen to do. Remember, they didn't have a Bible like we have. We're reading the finished work. Right. Some of them in Galatians and Ephesians, they never even had all the completed uh, 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 epistles like we have right now. So he's giving them these commands and instructions and rules and regulations and how God want them to live. You understand? So they're supposed to hear this, apply it that day and life changes. How did Paul do it? Paul was blind for three days. Did he not change overnight? He sure did. Paul was blinded. What did Jesus tell Ananias? That he's praying to me and he's been praying for three days. He didn't eat no food or right? Nothing, right? And he was praying after that encounter with Jesus. After the after, remember, faith comes by hearing him by the word of God. Jesus is the living word. So he heard Jesus say, I'm Jesus, whom not persecute. His faith came. That same night he went and was led, and he was blind. What did the Bible say? He was he was blinded for three days and he was praying unto God. Isn't that what Jesus told Ananias? Now, when he when Ananias went to him, what happened? He laid hands on Paul. And the scales fell from Paul's eyes and he opened his eyes and received his sight, right? The Bible said he did what? He immediately went and preached that Jesus was the Christ, right? Then he went and spent years with the Lord and received revelations and came back. His name still was Saul through most of the part of the, the beginning of when we hear about him. Then you see his name be changed to Paul. The same way it was Abram in the, in the Bible, then it became Abraham. The same way it was Sari, and it became Sarah. They went through the same thing. You see? But you don't never see him doing the same thing. He heard that word one time and was changed overnight. Because it's just like you being told, hey, at this hotel, you can't smoke. Ain't no smoking. This is a smoke-free hotel. You don't got to keep telling a grown person or someone that knows how to uh, obey rules and regulations to keep doing something. You're not responsible if that's what you got. If somebody got to keep telling you something. What do you mean? The word is supposed to be received at that moment. The same way it was received by Paul. Read it in the book of Acts. Paul heard that word one time and changed overnight. Read it. You saying it's not possible. It happened with me. You heard what Justin just said. Look at my old life. Do the math. Look at my last video on YouTube. Then look at my Facebook page. Look at the time. You do math. I change overnight. You understand what I'm saying? Because I believed the same way I stayed for my driver's test. And when I took the test, I passed it. I took my driven, my, 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 the road test, I passed it. Because I really wanted to get my license and to be independent and stop asking for rides. You understand? Or stop stealing cars. I was doing that before I got my license, right? So I desired it. If you desire something, it becomes easy. The same way you desire to be a wife or be a husband or be a mom. You put all effort into it. You start taking your, your temperature. You taking, you know, when you're ovulating, all this stuff, just to, so you can get impregnated. So read it. Walk in the spirit and you shall not. You know what not mean? It means not going to happen. The lust of the flesh. Then he goes to break down what is the flesh. 
You got to explain this stuff. Come on, you got new people who never heard anything about God. You just can't say, walk in the spirit, more philosophy first. Like, what, is the, what does the spirit even mean? And what does the flesh even mean? So he's going to break it down and explain what both mean. You just can't tell somebody, come to Jesus. All right. All right, come on. Like you got Who is Jesus? He's the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, son of the living God. Came in flesh and blood. You got to tell them. Why did he die? He died for our sins. What do you mean die for our sins? Because in the Old Testament, let me go into the whole story. You understand? God made the world. We didn't make the world. Just Adam and Eve sinned. And since then, he promised that, uh, you know, a child be born to rescue the give us, give us salvation, give us a chance to live an everlasting life. You got to explain it to them. Why did the Jews kill him? Why well, they killed him? Because you understand? That's where preaching and teaching comes in. You got to break it all the way down. All the way from Genesis all the way to Revelations. And that's why I come in. You understand? Ephesians 4 tells you that. He gave apostle, prophet, teachers, you know, affecting the saints, working the ministry. Okay? Now, for the flesh is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so they so you cannot do things you would. But you be led by the spirit not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, various eliminations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revealings, and such like of that what I tell you before. See? So he's writing to them after he visit them. Remember? That's what I just told y'all. Okay? But now he's giving them more. Remember? Because remember, what he's about to give them, right? What he's about to give them now, he's adding more. I mean, what he's giving to them now, he's adding more than what was given to them in the beginning of time. Right? I tell you before, as I told you in time past, that they were to do such things and I hear the kingdom of God. Right? Nobody says right here. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And they are Christ. Listen, has crucified the flesh. That means put to death. If, the de if, if something is dead, it doesn't have life, right? Something is dead, it can't sin. Something is dead, it can't lie. Something is dead, it can't harm someone. Something is dead, doesn't have any life. So if you're dead, the flesh is crucified, then the only thing that's alive in you, if you're truly spiritual, is the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of truth, which is righteousness and holiness and godliness, which comes from glory. It doesn't come from a, a, a word of corruption. Or a word of, uh, of darkness It comes from a word of light A place of light Righteousness it Comes from glory So that means you should be living The same way Christ is living It should be easy to you Because the flesh that, that That ruled you And dominated you That you You know was, was hanging and partying with Is disconnected now So now you're connected Right To a new source Of thinking A new source of speaking A new source of living That's why God didn't just Come and give you the gospel He gave you A supernatural entity Which is the Holy Ghost to live inside of you, right? To make to connect the 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 the, the, the to, to 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 make the complete connection. You got the word now, and not only do you got the word, you got the word living also in you. So not only are you reading the word, now you got the word, which is the Holy Ghost living inside of you. See, so He well equipped you. Okay, He didn't just tell you do this, do that, love your neighbor. He like no, love your neighbor because the right thing to do. Then once people accepted that. And they agreed with it. And 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 they did those things. And they and they accepted those things. He said, okay, I see you faithful. I'm going to give you my spirit. Okay? Let me prove it to you. This is what happened with me. When I first walked away from the world, I didn't have the Holy Ghost. I got delivered. So about a year, I got delivered. I was reading. I was praying. I, I was changing everything. Right? Then, once I got delivered... Shortly after that, I received the Holy Spirit. See? Courtney's phone is so strange. The kids be doing this, though. Courtney don't be doing this. The kids doing this. Let me see. Okay. Okay, we're going to go on the book of Acts real quick. Just trying to pull it up right here for y'all. We're going to go to Acts 5 and 32. Okay, I just want to read it with y'all. Okay, see it? Acts 5 and 32. Well, you can't see it, but... It say... Okay, Emma. Um, Acts 5 and 32. And we are his witnesses. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. Whom God has given to them that obey him. Okay. Now. We can prove that. If we go to Acts 2. Okay. Acts 2. 
Let's look at verse 40. Y'all can read the rest for yourself. You know, I, I preach this in a lot of my teachings. Acts 4 and, and 42. Acts 2 and verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Oh, I'm sorry. And with many other words, with any other words that he, this is verse 40. With many other words that he testified, exhort, saying, save yourself unto our generation. Verse 41. Then they gladly received his word and were baptized. And the same day were added unto them 3,000 souls. No Holy Ghost fell. And they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking the bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul. You see? So they was being built up to even have the faith to even receive the Holy Ghost. So now when you get to Acts, so you go to Acts, go all the way through Acts 2, go all the way to Acts 3, go all the way to Acts 4, go all the way down to verse 29. Okay? And now, Lord, behold their threatens and grant unto thy servants with all boldness they may speak the word. Talking about the people that was with them. By stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. See that? So two chapters went by, right? From Acts 2, 3 and Acts 4. And the, the, the bottom of Acts 4 is when those who were accompanied with the apostles when they got out of prison received the Holy Ghost. See that? Obedience. Okay? They lied to you. I'm telling you other than that. Okay, so let's move on. So, and they that are Christ have crucified the first affection and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory for one another, even one another. So just because you see that in verse 26, that doesn't mean that that's what you're going to do or that's going to happen. He's preaching. Remember, you have to choose this. Okay, you got to accept everything that's being said. So he's telling you what walking in the spirit of like what walking in the flesh of like. He's telling you what comes with the, with, the, with the Holy Ghost. And he's telling you don't be desirous. These things have to be told. If, if, if I go to this person right here sitting in this car in front of me and I say, look, man, you got to live for God. But listen, you got to love your neighbor as yourself. You know, you got to uh, read your Bible. You got to pray. You know, you got to do everything that's for the Lord. Okay. And listen, but you got You can't be jealous and you can't have envy. Why would like you see understand what I'm saying? They gotta be told everything. Okay? Gotta be given given everything has to be given to them. Okay? So they know what's it required of them. Because it's it's someone who will have those things and still be doing it. Okay? Why would we need to why would someone have a problem with not being desirous and vain glory? You know what I'm saying? This is new information being given to somebody. Romans 8. There's there is therefore no condemnation to them that, that are, which are in Christ Jesus who walk after the flesh, walk after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. For the law could not do that it was weak through the flesh. God sent in his son in likeness of the sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. For they are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, the, but, things of the thing, but the spirit, the things of the spirit. You see that? So what Rico was saying yesterday didn't make any sense. Because you clearly see right here, it says, for they that are at the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. See, that's, 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 that's putting, that's putting, two, that's, that's a separation. Okay. After the flesh, they do the things of the flesh. Okay. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. You see that? So there's no in between. For to be carnally minded is death, but you spend mind life in peace. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God. But not to jump to the law of God, neither than he can be. So they in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So be it the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man not the spirit of Christ, he's not none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead. See that? Why he keeps saying die daily, how they try to use the die daily stuff, but they got to understand what die mean. Die daily don't mean that you got to, you know, what, what they mean uh, by it, bro? Die daily is like what? Them saying, I'm talking about when the fuck, they say like, basically like you got to, you know, I don't know what they're saying, but I, I guess what they're trying to say is like you... I mean, it's not biblical, so you know they made it up. So the only thing that makes sense is they basically saying, like, you got to work on yourself. I don't know. But die and work on yourself and die and sin and die and, you know, struggle and die and not commit same sins. I, I don't know how you get die and those other words put together. Like, death means death. Okay? Death and life are two different things. You can't say life is death and death is life. It, like, you can't say the future is the past. And the past is the future. You, you, like, you can't say the future is your past. Like the guy was saying in the video. That's just weird. You understand? So when they saying die, someone taught them that. To say, oh, we got to die daily. Paul said you got to die daily. That means that we got to we gotta work on ourselves. That's not what that means. You understand? Dying doesn't mean that. Okay? Now, it say, 
But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Oh, and, the, uh, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life is because of righteousness. You see what he's saying? But the spirit in him is raised Jesus from the dead. Uh, this, but the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh. See? To live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. That don't mean that, that because he's saying that you live after the flesh. He's telling you that if you live after the flesh. You see, they, they try to use these words and be like, oh, what's if you live after the flesh? So that means you can choose to live after the flesh. That's not what he's saying. He just told you that you're not in the flesh, you're in the spirit. He just said that, you know, if you live in the flesh, you can't please God. So why would he tell them anything else if, they, if they're not doing the first part? You don't you don't take your driver test without taking the written, the road, the uh, computer test or the, or the written test. So he's telling them that those who live in the flesh, like it's just like it's just like me saying, you know, hey, if you're not delivered, you're going to be attacked by demons. You know, that's 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 just that's that's preaching the truth, whether you deliver from demons or not. You understand? You're going to hear the same message. OK. For many, for as many as led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You see that again to fear. But you ever see the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay? Matthew 6. So remember, we're talking about die daily, the false teaching. We're talking about walking in the spirit. The false teaching, they teach you that you got to do this daily. You got to walk in the spirit, you know, remind yourself, you know, like we, they, they're, they're, we're talking about these false teachings, how they make it seem like, you know. Okay, see, Jeremy, no. Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy got out of class. I knew somebody was going to have my back because I don't know. Y'all see, I was trying. Jeremy said this, they mean like dying to sinful desires because the desire, affection, and lust is still there. So they're like to die the desires they still have. Okay, so that's what Jeremy said that one of those false doctrines mean when the people say you got to die daily. But we know that's not biblical. Thank you, Jeremy. I was trying to make some sense. I mean, not make sense of it, but I was trying to communicate it to y'all, you know, to try to teach on it. But it doesn't make sense. It's like, I don't know how to say things that don't make sense. You understand? So Matthew 16 and 24. They said, Jesus said, Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. You see that? Whoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. So the Bible talks about dying. Remember, it's all spiritual. For what is a, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Okay, Luke 9 and 23. And he said unto them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. See that? Take up his cross daily and follow me. That's why Paul said, I die daily. You see? This is what he's saying, right? Take up his cross, right? Daily. What did, what, 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 when, when people, when you, when people had, to, when people was crucified, what did the people make them do? They had to walk with their what? On their shoulder. They had to carry their cross, right? Now, what did a cross mean? Death. Crucifixion, right? So what's crucifixion mean? Being put to death. So if you're, call, if you're carrying your Christ, if you're carrying your cross daily, right? As the Lord say, that means you're going on to what? You see what I'm saying? That means what? Suffering. Death. That comes from living as a Christian. That's what the Bible say. We it say that those who live in Christ will, will face persecution. Okay? So they're telling you. That living a life as a believer, okay, it's a life of sacrifice, a life of, you know, carrying your cross, you know, daily. That's what's going to come with this life, okay? Let's go into it, okay? Romans 8 and 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. See? That's why Paul is saying that. Okay? Let's read it. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 31, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Okay? But you got to keep reading what he's saying to that. And you got to read what he said before that. But we'll get to that, though. We'll get back to that. But I just want y'all to see what he said. This is what people, people take this out of context. You heard what Jeremy just said. He got it written on the screen for y'all. Okay? But that wouldn't make any sense to die sinful desires if the Bible already said in Galatians 5 that the flesh crucified would let affection and lust. So you see what I'm trying to say? Then Romans 6 said that we're dead to sin. Then Romans 8 tell you that we, we, we don't sin. And first, I mean, uh, 
that were not in the flesh. You had, the only way you could sin is being in the flesh. Okay? Psalms 44 and 22. Yea, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. See? So Paul was only reciting in Psalms 42 and 22. Matthew 10 and 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses life for my sake shall find it. So you see, they keep talking about death. Okay? Spiritual. Okay? Galatians 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. I told y'all, that's what Paul was talking about. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. See? But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what dying daily means. Okay? First Corinthians, remember, we got we can't we can't go off of what Google is saying and what somebody's saying because it sound good. First Corinthians 15 and 30. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? See that? Persecution that comes from preaching the gospel. The Bible says you're gonna be hated for his name's sake, right? Look what Paul says. See, they never quote this scripture first before they say I die daily. Watch. First Corinthians 15 and 30. And why stand in jeopardy every hour? I'm sorry, and why? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? Jeopardy of what? Come on, y'all know what he's saying. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts, I told y'all it's persecution. Come on now, I'm going to give y'all what the Bible say. Okay? It's the life that comes from Christ died for living righteous and living holy and preaching the word of God. They tell me we're going to face the same persecution. And then he, go, he, he goes in to break down why he died daily. After the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesians. What advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Awake the righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to their shame. You see that? Why would he say that? Let me go. Let me read that again, Jeremy. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this. To their shame. So because they don't have knowledge of God, they think that sinning is acceptable. They think that we're going to sin. He said, sin not. They're going to say, oh no, Paul in the Greek it means, you see what I'm trying to say? But they don't look at Greek for when they say go to heaven. They don't look at Greek when they say that we'll have the Holy Ghost and power. They don't look at Greek when it says God will exalt you in due time. They don't read Greek for that. Anything that benefits them, anything that's going to correct them and change them and expose them and force them to have to do what they don't want to do, they're going to go to Greek and Hebrew and Bible commentary. But when they say, you know, put on the armor of God, they ain't reading Greek for that. When it says, you know, they give us authority and power, Luke 10, 19, over the serpent and scorpion, all power and enemies hurt us. They don't read, they don't go to Greek. When they read in Isaiah 40, no before you should prosper. You know what I'm saying? When they read, you know, in Job, God gave him more in his latter life than he gave him in it. You know, they see all that stuff. Ain't no Greek for that. They don't want to see anything else. They don't want to see nothing that's going to make them not, you know, <laughs> you understand? If that's the case, you could read. If you're reading a Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic version that's that's different than what the Bible says today, who God has translated, right? Why you don't dare read everything in Greek? Because it's gonna all be different then. If if you whatever altered version Greek that you have right now is different than what the Bible actually says, go read the words that say, "No weapon formed against you prosper." Oh, what they're saying is. The weapon in Greek means, you know, to get good rest. And the prosper means, you know, to get a full belly. That's what it means in Greek. You understand what I'm saying? Some weird stuff. They don't do that, though. It's only for the things that they can't change. It's only for the things that will cause them to be forced to change. It's only for the things that will bring exposure into their life. They go to Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. Or they go to Bible commentary. Or they, they ask questions on Google. Hey, a, hey, let's ask Jeeves. Hey, Jeeves, what does the Bible mean when it says not to be angry? How can we not get angry, Google, when, when we're always going to sin? Oh, okay, yeah, what the Bible is saying there is that you're not supposed to practice being angry. Okay, don't practice. Don't make it something that you do every like, it, it still don't make any, like, no matter how you spin it, it don't make sense. It still put it in your control. Okay, you still got control. Okay. All right.
Okay, Acts 20 and 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life there unto me, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus testif testify the gospel of the grace of God. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life there unto me. See? 2 Corinthians 11. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. And labors more, abundant in stripes, above measure in prison, more frequent in deaths, off. Of Jews, five times received by 40 stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. At night, a day, a day I have been in the deep. And journeys off in perils of water, perils of robbers, and perils by my own countrymen, and perils by the heathen, and perils in the city, and perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils among false brethren. And weariness, and painfulness, and watchings, Often in hunger and thirst and fastens often and cold and nakedness beside those things which are without, which come upon me daily, the care of the churches. See that? Sarah said, if the Bible, if that's right, if the Bible can't be trusted and they have to go and read it in Greek, then why read it at all? Just stick to Greek. See what I'm trying to say? Because that's right, sir. But see, delusion going to tell them that, see, that's like the obvious they're not going to do because delusion will tell them that they're, they're getting a deeper revelation. They're studying it. They're going deeper. You know, they're finding the true origins of God's word. Okay. That's right, though, sir. Why read the Bible? That's I, that, my whole point is just trying to prove to y'all that they're not Christians. Okay. That you're going to meet more who are not Christians than those who are Christians in your life. For instance. We live in America. There's 300 million people. Statistics say that there's 200 million that claim to be Christians. Why are there so many luxury cars out here? Think about it. You see more people who claim, statistically, we're talking about math now. Come on, my math beauticians, right? We're talking about math. If you put 200 million next to 100 million, what's, a bigger, what's bigger? What will consume the other one? The 200 million, right? Exactly. Okay, there's 300 million in this country. There's 100 million who don't claim to be Christians and 200 million who claim to be Christians. Let me ask you a question. Why are there so many movie theaters and gun ranges and clubs and strip clubs? You know, some of the same people who claim to be Christians are owners of these unrighteous establishments. Some of these folks who claim to be Christians own boutiques and they sell clothes, you know, they own liquor stores, all different type of stuff. They do. You understand? They drive in expensive cars. They shopping in Louis and Gucci and you know, all this type of stuff. They go into the movie theaters. Some of these people, the two million, the two hundred million who claim to be Christians, some of them are the reason why celebrities even, some, some of these celebrities are even following them. I mean, even they even follow so many celebrities. Some of them who claim to be uh, Christians are the reason why, you know, uh, some cars and clothing lines and a lot of, you know, entertainment things are even popular because they're watching it, they're buying it, they're just saying it. How come you walk around it's too many people in this country going to be Christians, but no, nobody act like it because they're not Christians. They're in Christianity. Okay. That's why they don't receive the word when they hear it. They get mad the same way demons get mad. Acts 14 and 19. They, they, the, the people today who claim to be Christians, they act the same way that the Pharisees acted when, 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 when Jesus spoke those, those words that was true. They had the same reaction. They tried to find fault in everything. Oh, look at his hair. Look at Ronald's hair. What? He, he reading that Bible. He, he, he don't got nothing on his page but my hair because they don't understand what the Bible is saying about it. You understand? They're going to try to, oh, why you got tattoos? Like, okay. I mean, I come from the, a world of sin. Like, why you got 10 kids before you was married? Like, what's the difference? You understand? Like, what's the difference? I come from, like, why did, why, why did Paul persecute Christians? Why was, Mo, Moses was a murderer. So Moses had to walk around here. Everybody talk about how he murdered the, the Egyptian uh, this, uh, soldier. Paul had to walk around talking about how he, he persecuted churches. Paul had to walk around talking about how he was there when Stephen got killed. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, let the past be the past. You acting like the guy who was doing a fake teaching the other day. Your, your future is your past. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you go to your past. You know what I'm saying? Y'all find anything discredit somebody because of that truth. Just like, just like when y'all hear the word of God and y'all read it, y'all discredit that and go read it in Greek and Hebrew and read on Google where it's going to be altered and, and, and changed and, and the man coming from his own mind telling you about it. Same way. <laughs> the truth is there, you're going to find fault. You go, <laughs> you read the whole Bible and, and 
no, uh, this can't, no, I don't, this is not something, it's, it's the scribes changed it. Okay, but let me ask you a question. Do you sin? Do you live in sin? All the folks that be saying that's about the Bible, as they live in sin, they do. That's their excuse. They're not going to tell you the truth because they're liars. The Bible say not know the truth, but they're liars. That's it. The, just ask them. All that controversy, Hebrews lights, all that Jesus Christ is black, all that stuff. Ask them, do you sin? They're going to tell you, yeah. That's why they go and read in Greek because it helps numb that conviction. That's why they go and read Bible commentary because other sinners are writing their deluded, dilute, you know, watered down, altered, you know, delusional version of, 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 you know, the Bible. And that's, that's who they are. Remember, there's 2 billion so-called Christians in the world. So you can turn it, you could do a whole 360 and, and you can find something that supports your delusion. Just, just anything. Hey, are we perfect? Nope. Did, uh, uh, you know, did Paul sin? Yup. What first John say? Oh, we, we say have no sin. Like they, I'm telling you, even, even no matter how much it contradicts the context of the scripture, no matter how much it makes the, the Bible seem like it's unstable and it's confusing, no matter how much it makes the Bible look like it's a lie, you're going to believe it because at that time and moment, it supports your flesh and takes away that strong conviction. Okay. You don't even care how, what you believe, make the Bible look like it's not trusted. Okay. Acts 14, 19. And there came certain Jews from Enoch and Iconium who persuaded the people when having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. How about disciples stood around him and he rose up and came in the city and the next day departed from Barnabas to debris, departed with Barnabas to debris. And when they had preached, and when they had preached the gospel, to uh, preach the gospel, preach the gospel to that city and had taught many, they turned again to Lystra and to Iconium and, and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in faith and that we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. Told y'all, that's what he's talking about dying daily. Okay? But you heard what it said though. Don't, 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 don't read that verse 22 in Acts 14 real quick. Take your time. It said confirming the souls, not talking about anxiety, anger, you know, set back. Look what it said. It wasn't, it wasn't there. They don't preach like your pastor, your fake pastor. They didn't, they don't sit there and got to tell you over and over about loving your neighbor and not having fear and anxiety and frustration. Look what it said. He told them though, confirming the souls of disciples, confirming and exhorting them to continue in faith, not how your pastor preaches. Y'all got to get the faith and you, you know, trust that God's going to do it. He said, continuing in the faith. Okay, he just was encouraging them. And that we must do much religion in the kingdom of God. That's it. He wondered, I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? The Lord is going to bless you. I know right now and it seems like God's not answering you. I know it seems like, I know it seems like, you know, God's not answering you. I know it seems like God is far away. I know it seems like, you know, God's not hearing your cries, your prayers, but you done cried your last tear. And that's not what he said. Confirming the souls. Right? And exhorting. Okay, I got 4% on this phone. Romans 6 and 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But that he lived, he lived unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead and deed unto sin. See? That's what dying daily means. <laughs> and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. See? Uh-oh. Romans 8 and 13. Um, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. I read that one. Galatians 5 and 24. I read that one too. Philippians 1 and 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, and that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For me to live is in Christ, and to die is the gain. Okay? For if... For if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I will not. For I'm as straight betwixt two, having desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far, far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, you notice they never say walking in the flesh. You know, they never say from us to the flesh. They always separate the flesh. They, see, when they talk about like the world and, and being worldly, they always specify that. You know when he's talking about just being in his body, right? That they're, they're never saying the works of the flesh or walking in the flesh or you giving into the flesh. He's like living my life in this flesh, right? Talking about the body. 
But when he's telling you about the fleshly nature, they're mentioning sin. They're mentioning, you know, uh, 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 unrighteousness. They're mentioning, you know, you know, doing the things that's not that's not for God. Okay. Colossians 2 and 20. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living the world you subject to the ordinance? See that? Dead. For the rudiments, uh, if you be dead in Christ. Matthew 10, 34. And they shall mock him and shall scorch him and shall spit upon him and shall kill him. And the third day, he shall rise again. Okay? Remember that Christ was a torture tool. Right? It represented humiliation and death. And that's what comes from being a believer. People are going to talk about you. That's why the Bible say, pray for that person, uh, bless them that persecute you. And pray for, pray, uh, pray for them that persecute you. Uh, bless them that, that curse you. Right? Pray for them persecute you, uh, that, that persecute you. Because this is what's going to happen. They're going to mock you. They're going to call you names. All that stuff. That's what, that's what the cross is for. Right? When they talk about it. Titus 2 and 11. Now watch this. Now we, this phone about to die. Let me try to just charge it a little bit right here. It won't use too much of the battery. Oh, that's the wrong charger. Okay, let me try to get through this. Okay, now look. Look what it says in Titus. For the grace that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that in our ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You see that? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, just like you learn how to drive a car, that denying, see, denying puts it in your power, ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live so righteous godly in this present world. See, teaching us denying ungodliness. You see, it's supposed to happen immediately at that time. Once you hear that word, it teaches you. Once you say, love your neighbor, you're supposed to go home and say, I love my neighbor. Once you say, you know, forgive, you're supposed to go home and forgive. You know, once you, it tell you rejoice, you're supposed to rejoice. If it say thank on these things and the lovely things are just, you're supposed to do that right then. And that's supposed to be what rules you and dominates you. Remember, Learning how to learning, listen to certain music, you have to learn the song and remember the words, right? That's how you can you can rap it. Once you hear it, when or you sing along to uh, gospel or R and B, it's the same way. It's learnt behavior, so they're teaching you how to live like Christ, how to be citizens, candidates of heaven. Okay. Now, why would they say obey these people if you couldn't do it? Because it takes the same effort to obey God's word, and you know that you obey it. That's why you're not in jail. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient. This, uh, uh, listen, we ourselves also were sometimes, past tense, foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appear. You see that? That's how we was able to change. Not works righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing, the regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost. See that? That's how you become born again. Regeneration. That's what it's telling you. So you see, he said in Titus 3 and 3, we were before like this. But once the, just like when, remember what Titus said in 2 and 11, for the grace of God that appeared. So it taught us a new way of thinking, new way of talking, a new way of living, a new way of everything. And he's, he's establishing that in chapter 3 as well by saying we were sometimes disobedient, foolish. He don't tell us that we're, we're that way now. There's no way where they say that at. Boy, I might need that charger, boo. I might make it. Let me let me let me go through this real quick, y'all. I might make it. Cause I'm I need the power box too. But let's just see. Um Corinthians 6 and 9. You know that the, the righteous are not here the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor infinite, nor be abusive with themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covets, nor drunkards, nor relatives, nor extortioners, shall hear the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. See that? Past tense. Nowhere were they talking about you being a fornicator now. Nowhere were they telling you, okay, I know you, you commit some sins. You commit sex. They're not saying that. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God. You see that? They never talk to you as if you're doing those things now. That's what Christianity is teaching you. They're lying to you. Okay? We know better. The same way I know not to go rob a store. The same way I know not to go speed down the street. The same way I know not to, you know what I'm saying, throw trash on the road. Like it's, You know. That's what being a true Christian is. Like, What's hard about that? Once you're told these things, it's easy to do it. If you want to do it. you just been taught a superstition and you're trying to play, portray, you don't want to look at as being an evil person so you try to make excuses for your sins. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you has he quickened who was dead in trespasses and sins. Who were, see? Ephesians 2 and 1. And you has he quickened who were dead 
and trespassing and sins. When when you in time pass, you walk according to the course of this world. See that? Time pass. They never talk about you struggling, you making mistakes, you still sin right now. They don't never say that. I'm reading it to you. When you were in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit of the work of Trinity. This is Ephesians chapter 2. Among whom also we had our conversations in time past. See that? He keep telling you past tense, right? And the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature turned to wrath, even as others. But God, who was rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together, right? With Christ, by grace you are saved. And has raised us, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. See, if you're in heavenly places, you ain't living in sin. You understand? First Timothy 1 and 2. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me in ministry, who was before, who was before, past tense, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it what? In ignorant and unbelief. So you have no excuse why you're doing things now. Paul didn't know any better. And the grace of the Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. First Peter. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself like God with the same mind. For he that suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. See that? That he no longer should live the rest of his life, the, the rest of his time in the flesh of less of men, but to the will of God. So where do y'all get that you can keep sinning and that we're going to sin? I, this is Peter now. I mean, I'm going through. Oh, I can go to Jane, John's. I don't got enough time. Listen. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Lust of men means sin. For the time past, our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revealings, uh, banquets, banquetings, and abominations, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riding, speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? You see that? Past tense. He telling you, people think you strange now. That you're not doing the same sins. That you're not with them. You're not doing the banquetings and revelings and excess of drinking and getting drunk. They think it's strange now. Even Peter's saying past tense. That's Paul saying past tense. Peter is saying past tense. That you no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to less of men. For, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of Gentiles. That means non-believers. When we walked in lasciviousness. Past tense. You're supposed to be a Christian because you believe in God's word. You have faith to... Uh, you, um, you, have, you have to believe, uh, believe in God's word. You have faith to sin means you don't have faith. Right? So to sin means you don't have faith. Okay? Hebrews 10 and 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but to them that believe to the saving of soul. Come on now. We are not them who draw back. That means backslide. That means sin. Come on. This man, Hebrews 1038. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. So Paul wasn't living in sin. <laughs> See, see, the false Christians are good at traditions, not good at being a Christian. Okay? They can't fake being a Christian. They can fake, uh, they, they, they're good at being a, a, a tradition and doing what the tradition say. That's why they can be at church on Sunday. They can, they can, they can, um, you know, they can, they can pay their tithes and offerings. They can dress up. They can act like they're spiritual, but they cannot be what a Christian is because you can't fake that. <laughs> Colossians 1 and 20, 21. And that you were sometime alienated and, and enemies in your mind. By wicked works, yet now has he recounseled you in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, and unprovable in his sight. Are y'all not reading this? Colossians 1, 22 and 2. And that you were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has recounseled. Where are they talking about you're still living in sin? You're going to go 1 John 1 and 8, Romans 7. Like, man, that's, that's, a, mis that's a misinterpretation. Okay, you read about another contradiction here. That's why I said y'all teach contradictions. This, it's not a contradiction, okay? Ephesians 5 and 3. I got 1% boo on a pink phone. I, sh I should make it through it though. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. But fornication and all uncleanness or covenants, let it not be named amongst you as becoming of saints. Let it not be named amongst you. 
Let it, let it, let, let it not be once they must become the saints. That's Ephesians 5 and 3. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that the whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an adulterer, have any inheritance in the kingdom of God, Christ and God. Awake righteousness and sin not. I read that already. Ephesians 4 and 20. Be, be ye, ha but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye may put on the new man, which after God created righteousness and true holiness. See that? So to, so to be renewed by your mind, they say be not conformed to the world, be transformed from your mind. That just talks about the transformation part takes first. I mean, uh, not conforming to the world means you're denying the world, denying sin, denying unrighteousness, right? Conforming, uh, uh, transform is when you uh, accept the word of God, which give you a new mind frame, a new way of thinking, a new way of living. That's when it's renewed. It's not saying renew your mind daily. That's not what the Bible says. Okay. Now, Titus 3 and 1 say, put them in mind to be subject to principalities, powers, to obey magistrates and be ready for every good work. Okay. Uh, so if you, why would God tell you to obey uh, magistrates and submit to principalities if you couldn't do it? Because you do do it. Before you even, most of you, before you even heard of God, word was already obeying rules and regulations, commands. So why you can't obey God's? So you're telling yourself, and that's what you're gonna judge you. That's what you're gonna judge you when you die, okay? Because you already show responsibility. You show, uh, you show ambition. You show uh, leadership. You show that you can do this and do right and wrong. So when you die, that's what you're gonna judge. He's gonna use you, okay? He's gonna use it against you because you already know better. Stop lying. Stop listening to false teachers. Know ye not to whom ye are your servants, to whom you obey. Service to whom you obey, whether you sin to death, be righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart, the, from the doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being made free from sin, you became servants of righteousness. You see what I'm trying? Y'all read the rest of yourself. That's Romans 6, okay? Verse 16 to verse 22. Revelations. I know the works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So that because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will speed out my mouth. See? So it goes to show you right there. Okay, I, st I still got I still got a little time. Okay, I speak at the manner of men because of the firmness of your flesh. But as you have yielded your member service to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your member service righteousness unto holiness. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit have ye in those things? Whereof you are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. See that? You are ashamed. It's past tense. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, you ye ye have your fruit unto holiness and to everlasting life and to end everlasting life okay one more thing one more thing come on phone hang in there real quick hang in there phone okay hold on real quick we might get it one percent y'all okay If not, I'll just get Jeremy to give it to me. Okay? Okay. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world. And be not conformed to this world. Oh, it died. Okay? Somebody post for me, uh, Romans. Um, post that for me. Be not conformed to this world. Real quick. Somebody post that for me. It It died. Okay. Somebody give me that and be not conformed to this world. So we know that being conformed means to do the same thing the world do. So you got to think when you're hearing the gospel being preached, it's trying, it's calling you. That's why Paul said, "Whom we preach, you know, that we may persuade men." Okay. Thank you, Justin. Look what it says. And be not conformed to this world. Okay, thank you, bro. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Watch this. Look at how it says, but be ye transformed. Okay? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, accept the perfect will of God. So the renewing of your mind, okay, so okay, let's just let's just let's take it little by little. Okay? So if I'm preaching somebody, right? I'm telling them that they gotta repent for their sins. Right? They gotta turn from their wicked ways. So I'm telling you, don't be conformed to the world. Why not be conformed to the world? Because the world is evil, is wicked, it's against God. Okay? It's sinful. It only um, yields uh, unrighteousness. 
Okay? And I'll say, well, and you got to be transformed. And a transformation will happen by the word of God. Because how can you be transformed without knowing what is required of you? And what is taught of us, right? To be able to renew our mind. So the transformation takes place. You got to slow down, brother. Hey, brother, pulling in fast. You got to take your time. So um, to be transformed, right? Is by renewing of your mind. So the, renew the transformation plays from when you receive the word of God, you apply the word of God, you live the word of God. So once that's there, they're talking about the beginning. That's the beginning of, of being a believer. Okay. Because why would they tell a believer to not to be conformed to the world? Like, why are we believers if we conform to the world? That don't make any sense. Okay. The Bible say that the flesh is crucified, the flesh and lust. So they're not talking to a believer. You understand that when you read in this Bible, remember, it's going to talk. It's going to talk about those who have the Holy Ghost. We'll talk about those who don't got the Holy Ghost. We'll talk about those who are strong. We'll talk about those who are weak. I just want to talk about all these things. Right. Because you you never you always going to have a mixture of people who just came to the faith, people who've been into the faith. So you got to say both parts, right? You got to make sure things are preached because there's going to be more people who are non-believers than there are people that's believers. There are more people who who don't have this, more people who don't have the Spirit than who, who do have the Holy Spirit, okay? So we even see it in, in the book of Acts. Like we only seen a few instances. We've seen thousands and thousands. We even seen thousands of, of people getting fed by Jesus. We even seen, you know, all these years go by, the Lord was preaching and teaching. We see all these years, it was thousands and crowds crushed. You know, he had to get on boats and preach, but only 120 waited for the gift of the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? So the Holy Spirit never it never was given, you know, from what we read in the in the Bible. You know, even the epistles that we read, just being poured out on these people. You know, like we see it in Acts and stuff like that, but we really don't see unless the brothers mention it, you know, in the epistles, right? You got to be in obedience. So a lot of people might will hear the word. The Holy Ghost don't just come right then. You understand? Like you got to know what's required. They they showed even the, the disciples spent three and a half years with Jesus. You know, and they, I mean, Judas didn't get it. He forfeited. Judas, Judas didn't get it. You understand? A lot of people didn't wait for it. That was following. Even remember the seven disciples, the sixty that that went away, they didn't get it. Remember it was sixty at one point in time, they didn't get it. So when you understand, if I'm telling you, don't be conformed to this world, right? But be transformed by knowing in your mind. How do you renew your mind by the Word of God? Then it says that you may prove. See, you can't do that without your mind being renewed, without the word ruling and dominating you, without the word being in your heart, without you knowing the word. That only can come from, right, uh, the word of God. And it transforms you. It's just telling you to be not conformed, which is do what the world do. And it's saying be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It don't say you're going to be transformed. The, re the transform is by renewing your mind by the word of God. Right by the gospel, by believing, by uh, uh, living those things and applying those things, you know, accepting it. That's when transformation comes. Because then you can start reading. It says, okay, love my neighbor, love myself, love my enemy. You know, forgive. You know, uh, um, um, you know, pray without ceasing. You know, give thanks. You know, rejoice. You know, and be exceedingly glad. You know, uh, honor all men. You know, love all men. Like you know, all those things. Now you can prove what is the per good, set the perfect will of God because that's what God will is. So in order, how would you know what the will of God is without knowing what his, his commands and instructions are through his word? Love you all. God bless.